You may be seated. My last message, which is also very short, is called Examine Yourselves. Do what? Examine yourselves. That means assess yourself. First Corinthians eleven twenty eight. But let a man examine himself. Assess yourself. Amen. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Assess yourself, all of us. Tell your neighbor, Charlie, examine yourself. This is why people bomb their exams. Because they don't examine themselves. They don't do exams at home. Let a man examine himself. This is why people don't pass the exam. When I was doing my O-level, A-level, I did have the exam questions. Plenty, and I examined myself in the house. I don't even wait for them to do mock. I don't wait for mock. I have no time to wait for the teacher to decide to examine me when I'm going to do O level. I'm going to do A level. That's that she is not going to mark. We had a geography teacher who wasn't teaching us the syllabus. We used to call him Labrador. <laughs> because he always talking about the Labrador current. I couldn't wait for Labrador to teach me the geography. I have to examine myself. Assess myself. Look at the geography questions that have been coming. And I kept on examining myself. That's why I had the marks that I had. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith. Whether you are actually walking according to the faith. And prove your own selves. Prove your own self. Know you not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Except you be reprobate. Re- prove for yourself whether you are a pastor. You are a full time pastor. And a lay pastor has got more attendance than you. You mean why you claim that you are doing it full time, and he is doing Tuesday and Sundays in the evenings, and you are called full time? I mean, somebody's got to be crazy. Examine yourselves, and I'm going to give you thirty points of examination. Yes. Change the version, please. Change the version. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Take a good look at yourselves to see if you are really believers. Test yourselves. Do what? Test yourselves. Test yourself. You say you are a pastor. They appointed you as a pastor. Test yourself and even you yourself to tell yourself that Charlie, they think they made a mistake. They made a mistake. Pastor, they are not a pastor. Test yourself. Change the version. Change the version. Test yourself to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along. Taking everything for granted. Give yourself regular checkups. I like this. You need first hand evidence. Not mere hearsay that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. If you fail the test, do something about it. (laughs) 
Regular checkups. Regular checkups. Change the version. Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. NLT. Test yourselves. Test yourselves. Test yourselves. There are things you must do, some mental tests. Analyze yourself. Look at your attendance. Look at your income. Yeah. Ask yourself. I've been in the ministry for 11 years. I graduated. I was in Anakazo for four years. I've been out there for seven years. I've been out there for nine years. Test yourself. Ask yourself that, Charlie, is this what it is? Is that all that this is going to ever be? Amount to it? Test yourself. Maybe you have to move from where you are and do something about it. When a person cannot test himself, he is usually not qualified to be a leader at the head. Because when you are a leader at the head, you have to test yourself all the time. Galatians 6, verse 4. Let's look at the NASB. Galatians 6, verse 4. But each one must examine his own work. Examine your own ministry. And then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone and not in regard to another. Each one must examine his own work. Examine your church. Examine your, your, your ministry. Examine your building without doors, without light, without plastering, without chairs. Without chairs. How can people come to a church without chairs? Plastic chairs. Last time somebody came, he sat on the chair and fell down. Test yourself and see whether this is how you want things to be. Test yourself and ask yourself whether should you not be a lay pastor and not a full-time pastor. You are a lay pastor. You are a pastor. You are rather campaigning that you should be called reverend. One day a pastor came to see me and he said that uh, he doesn't know why I have not nominated him to be a bishop. Yes. He doesn't know why I have not nominated him to be a bishop. So he wants to know. Yes. And I don't mind us answering that question. But if you examine yourself, you will get to know the answers. Yes. If you examine yourself, you get to know the answers. Look at ourselves and do that examination ourselves. If the examiner gives you the examination, you will do it, but you won't do it for yourself at home. Examine yourself. Amen. Examine yourself. Are you still around? First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21. But examine everything carefully. NASB. Prove all things. But the NASB says, but examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good. Amen. And now, Revelations chapter 2, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. And I want to read from the NLT. NLT. 1 Timothy 3 and verse number 10. Before they are appointed as pastors, let them be closely examined. Closely examined. If they pass the test, then let them serve as deacons. Let them be what? Closely examined. So we have to examine you before you be made a pastor. Before you be made a minister, shepherd. That's what we call 
servants armed and trained. We have to examine you closely. Amen. Then let them serve as deacons. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you need to be examined closely. Now, Revelations chapter 2 and verse 2. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 2. New Living Translation. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles, but are not. You have discovered that they are liars. So if you can examine the claims of those who claim they are apostles, you can also examine the claims of those who claim they are bishops. You can also examine the claims of those who claim they are pastors, who claim they are reverends, who claim they are in full time, who claim they are whatever. Examine the claims. People are going to start asking the bishop, but I thought you were a bishop. But look at the church, a very small church, minuscule. But me as a lay pastor, my members are more than you that you are saying you are a bishop. I don't think you are preaching the right message. You, you, you don't pray. Pastor, when will you go for retreats? We have never seen it before since we knew you. <laughs> Hey, now the pastors are afraid, pa. What the members are? The members are going to challenge the pastors, pa. Pressure is coming on the pastors. Examine yourselves. Amen. Let me give you 30 points that you can use to examine yourself. Amen. Number one. Now you have to write quickly because I'm not going to repeat. And I may decide not to give you some of the points. For my own personal reasons. Amen. Beautiful. Number one. You have to assess whether you are, number one, a pastor who is not pastoring a church. Did you get that? Number two, whether you preach weekly. Third point of assessment, whether you are known by the founder. Yes. Are you known by the founder of the church? Number four. Number four is what? Are you connected to the convener and to other bishops? Or you are isolated? The other day I was with a convener and he was looking at the pastors. He didn't know who they were. Was, Sir, who are these? That they were all his pastors. You are not known. Number five. Do you lack motivation and drive? You have to answer all these questions. Yes, no. How many of you are phlegmatic, phlegy, but stubborn? You know, phlegmatic is both slow and stubborn. You see, the person who described this, he used the body fluids. Sanguine speaks of blood. It flows like water everywhere. Bile is choler. The choleric is bitter. So that's a choleric. Bitter. So it's the bile. The, with the bile, when it goes on the meat, it spoils the whole meat. So it's bitter and harsh. 
That's a choleric. Bitter and harsh. Then phlegmatic from the phlegm. Then when you spit it into the sink, it will stay on the sink. Even though it's downhill, it won't go. So it is slow and stubborn. So a lot of phlegmatic, they have very nice nature and they look very peaceful, but they're very stubborn. Marry one and see. I said what? Marry one and see. Oh, now the phlegmatic. Mm. I think I'm going home. The people don't, don't like this point. Bishop Steve, I think I've had enough. I told you that I was coming for just two hours. Yeah, because this point, I don't think people want to have these points. Number six. Do you have disciplinary issues? What are disciplinary issues? Are you fornicating on the side? Ask the nearest pastor, do you have a side chick? Or ask the nearest sister, do you have a side man? Man on the side. As the nearest pastor, are you fornicating with one of the choristers? The Bible says if the foundation is removed, what can the righteous do? Do you have disciplinary issues? Are you a thief? Maybe you are a thief, big time. Or a liar. And those are disciplinary issues when you read the the normal gift of government book, all those are in the disciplinary chart. Stealing, lying, wickedness, treachery. Yeah. Uh, you see how the place has become quite like, it's like, I'm, I'm now losing my popularity. I'm losing my popularity in the church. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, lo- I'm losing my popularity. <laughs> you want to give birth with one of your female ashes. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Assess yourself. Examine yourself. Number what? Seven. Have you been transferred for have you been transferred because of something that is not good? That's what we call a punitive transfer. Like you were moved from that church because of a crisis or a problem. Because you see people that have been transferred from church to church, church to church, because they were not doing well or they had some problem there, so you have to move them. When you move them, eh, then they will later say, I, I've worked in the church for 18 years, I've been transferred seven times, I went from here to here, here to here, here to here, as if you were some king who was going on a tour. Meanwhile, you were being transferred because you were failing everywhere, everywhere you were not doing well. Everywhere you, are, you say you are the most transferred pastor because you are, you are the most useless. That is why you have been transferred so many times. So you have to ask yourself, was I transferred for any issue over any issue? The transfer that has happened, was it over any issue about any issue? Was it because of was poor performance that I was removed from that place? Poor performance after a certain period of time was it because of poor communication or was it because of moral problems or was it because you had two wives in one church I'm going to Zimbabwe I tell you these people it's okay I'm going to Zimbabwe yes I'm going to Zimbabwe
Number eight. Have you had repeated verbal warnings and meetings and rebukes? Warnings? Issues? Have there been meetings where you have been faced? You get it? Have there been meetings where they, they bring up your issues, the attendance, the church, the income, the membership, the activities? Have there been meetings where you have been warned and you have been faced and told this is not the way to do it? Repeatedly. Assess yourself and see that if that is the case, there is something wrong. Number nine. Have you had repeated written warnings and memos and letters? Are there any letters that have been written to you to either, you know, the thing that was said at the meeting, they now they wrote it. They wrote it, documented. These days we are writing more things because later on people get up and say, ah, I used to work, I worked very hard. I was this, I was that. I deserve this, I deserve that. You deserve NATO. You deserve NATO. And by the way, when an organization employs you, there is only a limited, you can't beat the organization and say, I want to give birth. Make me give birth. Where you work has only a limited relationship with you. You do this work and this is what you be paid. It doesn't mean your whole life's your whole life, whatever, I have, uh, where's my house, I have a, need a car, I need to travel here, I need to do that. I, I, you can work at any way. This, what is the contract between the two of you? I do this job and I'm paid this. Finish. You can't bring your whole life's issues. I want to eat chicken on Tuesday. I want to eat light soup on Friday. I want to eat fufu and whatever on, on, on Mondays. You can't bring all your personal problems, your marriage. My marriage is not working. My life is not working. So the workplace that you are working at is the cause of it. I mean, somebody's got to be crazy. Somebody's got to be crazy. You can't bring your whole life, your failure. You are a sanguine. You don't even know how to control money. When you get money, you mismanage it. Or then you want to blame the place that you are working on. I mean, how can you blame all your life's personal failings on one place that you are working at? If you are not working in the church, the place you are working, you will not have reason. There is no way you would have gone in that workplace. I mean, be honest. Examine yourself. They would have sacked you a long time ago. Yes. You can't even keep a job. You have bad relationships. Yes. And you are a poor performer. You are a poor performer. Uh, you can't bring that and throw it on the church. And say, oh church, oh church, oh church. Receive all my life problems. Receive all my life's problems. Eh? <laughs> because, you, because I was employed in the church, I must bring all my... I am 40 years, so I don't have anything. And so what? Blame yourself. Blame yourself for your own failings. And stop. You've got to be serious. You are the one who said you want to be in the ministry. Come on, grow up. You can't take a decision to be in the ministry. Later on, when things are not working and you say the organization has not done this and the church oh church owes you nothing and will give you nothing nonsense somebody's got to be crazy it looks like somebody's crazy we are tired of seeing people who are failures in life one that is why i don't like to employ people Yes, me, I'm, I'm a very careful employer. I don't like to employ people much. We encourage people to be in full time. I don't want to. Hey, you say you are, you are, you are, a, fail, you are a failing person. Yeah. Your behavior, your mannerisms and everything. You are not somebody who rises. Yeah. Yeah. You don't rise. Yeah. You don't rise. You are quarrelsome. You have bad re- relationships. Yeah. You are a man of turmoil. A man of turbulence. A man of issues. Ah, lazy bones, lazy bones. You are too casual, too relaxed to try, try it anywhere, do anything anywhere. The world was built by tired men, hard 
hard working. See as thou a man diligent in his business. He shall not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. I can show you all the kings and presidents of, of this world that I've, I've encountered with. Bible says, see as thou a man diligent in his business. I should not be here. And here it is against doctor's advice. Preaching. See as thou a man diligent in his business. Hard working. Why do relax to prosper? That relaxed attitude and casualness has not made you rise anywhere. Don't try to come and blame a church. One organization that you've gone to blame, you have, you've gone to work, you are blaming every of your life's failures. You did, you bomb in school, you bomb here, you bomb here, you bomb here. You've made yourself a traitor. You didn't understand the implications of being a bizarre traitor. To so now, look, look at you. Failing in every way. That's why I'm telling you that if you understand certain things, there are certain things you will never do. If you understand, so this thing, I'm making, I'm making myself a mistake. You have been even employed by someone. No one would have even employed you. Yeah. Go and check the unemployed graduates. Plenty. You are not even a spiritual enough to be a pastor. You have been able to mix up in the system and not be detected for a long time. Yes. Yes, you beat the system. One day, you know, I was a, a doctor, uh, and then, I don't know, a doctor, a medical student, and uh, the boss came and said, ah, come and see this doctor. Why, he's from, from, from country where he was trained. You know, these people, sometimes they, they are training wherever, they have never even delivered a baby before. <laughs> yes, why well, you go and become a doctor, doctor, doctor. You can't even deliver a baby. <laughs> so anyway, at Kolebu, he called said, come and see, come and see. He said, when we talk, people think maybe we don't like those who are trained here, those who are trained here, those who are trained here. Come. And he made us, everybody put on gloves and see. Come, and there was a lady there. She has given birth. You see, and that's why I say that there is a doctor, but he has escaped the system, and he's moving in the system as a danger, a danger to people. Yeah. He said, put on gloves, examine the woman. After she gave birth, eh, she was bleeding. You get what I'm saying? So the blood was coming, the womb is here, it's coming out of the woman. So after the after she was bleeding, and to stop the blood, eh, you know what the man has done? He has taken needle and thread eh, and sewed the, the womb and tightened the womb, the cervix, to keep the blood up there. Yeah. He said, Look, when we say, he said, This is not the first time. So the woman was there bleeding and tied the, what do you call it, to prevent the blood. That, that is how he's stopping the blood. Oh, the blood is collected. Yeah. Huge. And then it was seeping out. And she was becoming some other. All oh, these people are doctors. You see them taking urine for malaria parasites. Yes, urine for MPs. Hmm? All sorts of things. All sorts of things. But you see, they managed to escape the system. And we also have pastors like that and bishops like that. They managed to escape certain checks and balances. And they managed to maneuver, maneuver, maneuver. And for a while, they are at a position. I remember one guy said, call doctor. The last I saw that he was working at the castle. Those days that we have castle. When he left where I was, I saw that he was up there. When he came, he didn't even know how to talk to a patient. You know, when we are talking to patients, you have to get what we call a history. Do this. I sat down and I wrote what we learned at the first clinical year, how to clack a patient. I wrote it out for him. I said, you ask the name, the age, then you ask this, previous medical history, family history, this, that. Then you go through the system, gastro, gastro, gastrological system, uh, ner- nervous, this, cardiology, this. You go, there are different questions under each one. We have the questions we ask. If you know anything, it's, it's a doctor. So one day I met a guy, I met another doctor, and I said, so what do you do in the clinic? He said, well, I just try C2, we C2, 2 over 52. So when the patient comes, do you see, he said, whatever they were doing before, I just write the same thing again. He C2 over 12, which is in two months, or 2 over 50, which is, in two, which is C in two weeks. And they are all doctors, but they have been able to be in the system. So when you come, you say, like, oh, hello, ma'am. How are you? All right. Okay. Some small accent. You know what I'm talking about? Laugh. Then he said, okay, it's all right. You see, you'll be all right. You'll be okay. But 
All right, then he'll write there. He'll look at the prescription that the doctor before gave them. Then he'll just take it and repeat it and write it. Okay, see, two over 12, which means in two months. He told me. He told me what he does. So you can have a professional escape in the system through the different tests and different things that are there before I realize he's there. And when you go, he's doing something. Yeah. And that is how we have some bishops and pastors, you see that lazy bones. They, 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 they don't work. Sunday, they are home by 12. Sunday, they are home by 12. Sunday, they are home. A pastor from Lighthouse, UD, you are home in the afternoon on Sunday. You, somebody's got to be crazy. Somebody's got to be out of order. Something is wrong somewhere. Which church is this? Our church? Our church? Maximize Sunday usage. You are in the house on Sunday afternoon. Somebody's got to be crazy. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yes. So you are a family man and we are what men? You are a family man and we are what men? That's why you see the church is not working. I'm saying that there are pastors, missionaries, leaders, bishops. They've managed to escape the checks and balances in the system and enter. And then you see that it's a dangerous man walking. Yeah. Very dangerous person. Yeah. But now the members are knowing many things. They are not going to stand and say, hey, your preaching is not good. Your preaching is not good. You are not spiritual. Yes. We are not receiving blessings here. The church is not growing. <laughs> oh, yes. Hmm. Now, the next one manifestations of insubordination. Insubordination. Do you have any manifestations of insubordination, like rudeness? Like you tell your pastor, you speak rudely to your pastor, like the sons of Korah. They said, uh, Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who do you think you are? You, you think you are the greatest, whatever. You are nothing. Hey, watch out for people that are rude. Yeah. So when you manifest insubordination, we are marking you or mark yourself. Ah, there's something wrong with you. There's some pride somewhere that has not been killed. There are certain words you can never use. Number 11, manifestations of negligence and irresponsibility. Negligence and irresponsibility. You are in a church. The church has never been painted. You sit in the church never to organize anything to paint the church or to make the church nicer. Huh? You have a KVIP in the church. Kumasi ventilated improved pit latrine. KVIP. And you don't want to make any improvement to the church. Hmm? Oh. Look at the beautiful ladies that have come with their nice dressing. When they are going to urinate at the corner over there, they look like beds. Eh? <laughs> Hands. You see them in the corner with their dresses. And you, 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 nothing moves you to, to change anything in the church. No! Gross negligence. I left those churches for nine years. No door, no plaster. There was just one bag of cement and small sand. 
sand from the river. No, they will never do it. They will never do it. There were pastors there and bishops. Nothing. Do you have manifestations of gross negligence? You are not likely to be doing well. All this is if the answer is yes, then it means more points have been deducted from you. It's an examination. Examine yourselves. The next one. Do you have any manifestations of disloyalty? Yes. Ah, so that one. When you have those ones, it's not going to work. The next one. Manifestations of disobedience. Clear disobedience. You don't obey. Yes. The next one. Do you have manifestation where you fail to implement instructions? You fail to implement distra- instructions. There's a clear instruction. Do shabby shepherding must go, but you will not do it. One day, I was with some pastors. I was about to go on a plane. And I sat in the car with them and I held their shirt. I said, look, this town, they like dressing. From today, wear this dress. I showed them, dress like this. This is what they understand here. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. No. It was later that they tried to do one, two, one, two. No. That's why, you see, when you examine yourself, and you see clearly failing to implement instructions. Uh, an important one is speed. 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 The manifestation that uh, manifestation that reveal you are too slow. Yes. Too slow. The next one, manifestations of financial negligence. Hmm? You don't care. You don't care anything about the church. You are taking offering, you just take it lackadaisically, very relaxed. Nothing matters because you don't, you don't eat from offering. You work at uh, 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 Goma Rural Bank. And so you, you don't eat offerings. Eh? You work at Million Dollar Forest Bureau. Aziz Forest Bureau. <laughs> hey! You see a pastor. He's gone home. He has left the air conditioner on for two weeks. It never turned off. Oh. He said, you are not serious. So the church will pay the bill. And you don't care. You go out, air condition this on, this is on. How can you be rich? How can you be financial negligence? Examine yourself. Even your own personal life and your own business, you see. The next one. Financial questions or irregularities. Are there financial questions? You are a polling agent. Hmm? 67 votes to 153 votes. And you have changed the 67 to 267. Or 670 you've added for your party. Ah, you are a thief. The next one. Events that manifest significant variations or what we call heteros. Another of a different kind. Another of a different kind. You are not of the kind. You are not an alus. That you have brought a new ministry into our midst.
Number, number how many? Number 20 or number 19. You do not generate enough money from your church to pay a salary. If your church doesn't have enough money to pay a salary of one pastor, there's something wrong with your church. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Beautiful. Number 20. You have not broken the 100 attendance barrier. You've not broken the 100 attendance. You don't have 100 members coolly in your church. Ah, there's something serious. Missionary man. Missionary man. Missionary man. Missionary man. You've not broken 100. You have not become a centurion. A centurion. A man with authority over 100 people. Hmm. They are annoyed with me. Number 21, you have not broken the $1,000 barrier. $1,000 is like 10,000 CDs. Like your whole church for the whole month, you can't get offering of 10,000 CDs. Ah, you are not serious. You are not serious. $10,000 for what? You don't have doors. No tiles, no. I hear now they make tiles in Ghana. Yes. Are they nice tiles? Yeah. All our churches without tiles. You are walking on gravels. Some have not, they've not cast the floor. No lights, no chairs, no doors, no, nothing. So uh, you, you ask yourself, that, where do you think the money is going to come from? It's only going to come from us as we take offerings. Please, maybe you don't know. Our church, we don't have any fishing trawler. We don't have any rice farms. We don't have any oil storage, bulk storage business. We don't have tankers. We don't have VIP buses. We don't have stocks. We don't have bonds. We don't have... Galamse interest. Nothing. That 10,000 CDs that you get, is your, I don't know what it, what it, whether it can buy even one tile or one square meter. How much is one square meter? One square meter would be like this. Maybe four tiles here. Yeah. And they charge per square meter. Uh, you, you can't be a lay pastor. You are too relaxed. You, you are a lay pastor. And you are not concerned about the offering and the income. So we, we want, I say, every church, even this hall, we need to have LED screen proper. One here, 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 big, beautiful. We switch it on, we switch it on. Big television, very nice. Like when you come to the center, you see all our churches are going to have LED screens. Huge LED screens. Yes. You don't have a church without an LED screen. You don't have sound system. Every day, sound. <laughs> So, start, stop this. Look, the church members are going to say, This man is not a good pastor. I tell you, they will start saying it. This man is not a good pastor. How many points do you have? 21. Okay. 22. You are surrounded by rumors. Rumors. Hmm? What rumors? Maybe there are some rumors that I hear that this, this, this. We hear that. But it's like we can't confirm it. <laughs> you get it? So now rumors are also going to be taken into account. Yes. All unconfirmed rumors are also going to contribute to the big question mark over your life. Yes. Unconfirmed rumors. Yes. How 
Have you got number 22? Number 23. Mysterious with mysteries. A mysterious man with mysteries. When you come and you go, so I'm off. Then when you go, we don't know where you are. Then you come. They say, you went home, but you were not home. And so why were you not at the camp? Because, uh, you know, I had whatever. So there was a business deal. I saw this. Was, oh, yeah, okay. But then you realize that you are not doing business. You are working at Ghana Commercial Bank. I say, hey. Mysterious man. Yes, yes. You are married and your wife is in America. Ah, you have not seen her for two years. Mystery man. Huh? Your wife is in whatever. You have not seen her for two years. Not seen her for one year. She stays in Accra. You stay in wherever. Mystery man. How many have I given you? And the last seven I will not give to you. But with these few points, you can examine yourself. Yeah. You have not broken the $1,000 barrier. You have not broken the 100 barrier. Yeah. Failure to implement instructions. Clearly. I've stood here and I've talked to you about sh- Shabby Shepherd in my school. Would you implement it? I've told you the mother of all campaigns is the Swollen Sunday. Yes. Yes. And so many other things. Shabby shepherding must go. Amen. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. And I know God is going to bless you. Amen. So Titus, I think it was chapter 1, is it verse 10 about the pattern of ministry. Titus 1, 13, is it? Where is the man? Titus what? Oh, beautiful. Yes. Titus 2 and verse 7. Yes. But in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. And 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Follow what you heard from me and I RV as the pattern of true teaching. There is a pattern And I know God is going to bless you. Father, thank you for your word today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Bless our hearts. Bless our lives. As we serve you in Jesus' name. Now, every standing, I want to make a special invitation for those who want to be in the Bible school. Amen. I believe, hello. I believe that some of us here are called to the Bible school, to ministry. And I want to give you a special invitation and a special calling. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if God is calling you, the Bible says God has saved us and called us. Amen. So if God has saved you and God has called you, it is important for you to obey the call. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for some people whom I believe God is saving you and calling you. 
Everybody say saved, saved. And, called. and called. Second Timothy 1 and verse 9. God has saved and called. Everybody saved, saved. And, called. and called. Father, I thank you for many who are saved but also called. Bless each life and touch each life generously. I thank you for this great blessing that you give to us in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Bless us, O Lord. Bless us, O Lord. Touch the lives of many to serve you and to give themselves wholly to your great work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.